be sure the last couple months have been trying. In the wake of the revelations that American troops have mishandled religious texts to include the Quran. Four Americans have been killed and at least 15 wounded in attacks in Afghanistan since last week when Islamic holy books were burned at a U.S. base there. Dozens of Afghans have been killed or wounded in riots. The U.S. says the Qurans were burned with trash by mistake. I think someone's... Today, we spoke to U.S. Ambassador to Afghanistan, Ryan Crocker, and the commander in charge of the war, Marine General John Allen. Ten years in the country, sir, how could these Qurans have been burned? It is something that we're not happy about, frankly. And before the sun went down that day, Scott, I issued an order from my headquarters that called for the retraining of the entire force. And the whole thing to assist us in understanding the significance of the Quran and of the other religious materials uh, to the Afghan people. That's my obligation as a commander. That's our obligation as a people. Ambassador Crocker, the United States has been building a relationship in Afghanistan for more than a decade now, and I wonder how much has that relationship been set back by this incident with the Qurans? Scott, clearly it's been a bad week. But I'm quite confident that, you know, we'll get through this. The uh, pace of protests has dropped dramatically. A decade's worth of uh, relationships doesn't go away in a single week. So we'll, um, we'll move forward. Protests, some of them violent, occurred in several but only a few regions across Afghanistan. 32 Afghans lost their lives in these riots, and even more were hurt. Just since the 1st of January, the coalition has lost 60 brave troops in action from six different nations. 13 of them were killed at the hands of what appear to have been Afghan security forces, some of whom were motivated, we believe, in part by the mishandling of religious materials. And just as tragic as Dr. Miller mentioned, we're investigating what appears to be the murder of 16 innocent Afghan civilians at the hand of a U.S. serviceman. Villagers mill about in an eerie calm in Afghanistan's Kandahar province. It is here that Afghan officials say 16 civilians were gunned down in their homes in the early morning hours Sunday, leaving at least nine children, three women, and four men dead, and several more injured. The injured are being treated at coalition medical facilities. A senior official with the International Security Assistance Forces says a U.S. Army staff sergeant has been detained in the incident. So far, ISAF says he was acting alone and that there was no mission going on in the area. U.S. officials reacted swiftly to the incident. We deplore any attack by a member of the U.S. Armed Forces against innocent civilians and denounce all violence against civilians. We assure the people of Afghanistan that the individual or individuals responsible for this terrible act will be identified and brought to justice. But villagers and tribal leaders on the ground told us there was more than one soldier on the ground in the villages when the incident occurred. President Hamid Karzai alluded to that in a statement saying in part, those operations conducted against terrorism during which our innocent countrymen are killed, such as what the American soldier did, 
are acts of terror and unforgivable. Kandahar is known as the birthplace of the Taliban, and not long after the soldier was detained, the Taliban put out an official statement claiming it happened during a raid by U.S. forces. ISAF is disputing those claims, but a full investigation is underway. Whatever the case, the killings come just weeks after deadly protests erupted when U.S. troops mistakenly burned Qurans and other religious materials. The president of the National Coalition for Dialogue with Tribes of Afghanistan, Prince Abdul Ali Siraj, told us the timing of this incident couldn't be worse. The Taliban could not have asked for a better presence from the coalition than to have the two incidents that took place, you know, like the burning of the Quran about a couple of two or three weeks ago. And that's not even been settled as yet. And now uh, we have got the, the one soldier going and killing uh, a number of Afghan civilians. Uh, they are really going to milk this for all it's worth. Kandahar has been heavily targeted by coalition forces over the years. After this latest shooting incident, there is fear of violent reprisals. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Kabul. Now, each of these events is heartbreaking. And my thoughts and my prayers go out to all of those affected by this violence, coalition and Afghan alike. But I assure you, the relationship between the coalition and our Afghan security forces remains strong. This campaign has been long, it has been difficult, and it has been costly. There have been setbacks to be sure, and we're experiencing them now, and there will be setbacks ahead. I wish I could tell you that this war was simple and that progress could easily be measured, but that's not the way of counterinsurgency. They are fraught with both successes and setbacks which can exist in the same space and in the same time, but each must be seen in the larger context of the overall campaign. And I believe the campaign is on track. We are making a difference. I know this and our troops know this. Congressman Paul, I believe you are the only man on the stage who opposes the war in Iraq, who would bring the troops home uh, as quickly as almost immediately, sir. Are you out of step with your party? Is your party out of step with the rest of the world? If either of those is the case, why are you seeking its nomination? Well, I think the uh, party has lost its way because the uh, conservative wing of the Republican Party always advocated a non-interventionist foreign policy. Senator Robert Taft didn't want to be in NATO. Uh, George Bush won the election in the year 2000 campaigning on a uh, humble foreign policy. No uh, nation building, no policing of the world. Republicans were elected to end the Korean War. The Republicans were elected to end the Vietnam War. There's a strong tradition of being anti-war uh, in the Republican Party. It is the constitutional position. It is the advice of the founders to follow a non-interventionist foreign policy. Stay out of entangling alliances. Be friends with countries. Negotiate and talk with them and trade with them. Just think of the tremendous improvement uh, of relationships with Vietnam. We lost 60,000 and then we came home in defeat now we go over there and be in wet, invest in, in Vietnam. So there's a lot, of, a lot of merit to the advice of the founders and following the Constitution. And my argument is that we shouldn't go to war so carelessly. When we do, the wars don't end. So in some other Republican hijinks, uh, we have some numbers out of ronpaulforums.com in today's story that you won't hear anywhere on the mainstream. The reports for fundraising for the Republican presidential candidates came out just a couple weeks ago, and our good friends at ronpaulforums.com have been crunching the numbers. Here we have total contributions by active duty military personnel by the candidate. Herman Cain. $6,223. Now remember, these, these numbers are uh, coming from reports that, that may be, uh, if anything, overstating these, these numbers at this point. Uh, but Mitt Romney, not even coming up to, to Kane there for active duty military contributions, 5000 Michelle Bachman, bit of a late start this round, okay, $2,550. Newt Gingrich, whose campaign is imploding. I don't know if that was by accident there. 1,025. Uh, Palenti, all of $250 from active duty military. Rick Santorum, $250 also. Gary Johnson, sadly, none for his position. 
total there of those uh, other candidates, so to speak, $15,398. Sure sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Well, there's one other candidate who you might have noticed. Well, I don't know if you're watching the mainstream media. You, you might not have noticed that he was omitted from that list. Let's see, how much did Ron Paul get in this last quarter from active duty military? Oh, my gosh, $36,739.79. No surprise, actually, that this was the case. Far outstripping all other Republican presidential candidates put together, as was the case uh, four years ago. But let's see. Let's compare this to who's who's the other guy running for president in 2012? Oh yeah, twenty-eight thousand eight hundred thirty-three dollars and ninety-nine cents for the president himself, including all the donations from the Marines, the Air Force, the Navy, the, the Army. Yeah, whatever that other branch is, to the commander-in-chief, Ron Paul, is their choice. But let's go, let's take a look at the numbers from 2007 here, just for a second, comparing Ron Paul, John McCain, Mitt Romney, Rudy Giuliani, Mike Huckabee, and Fred Thompson. There's a little flash, uh, flashback. Total from the entire campaign back four years ago, again, Ron Paul, until, until the end of the primary season, Ron Paul had more campaign contributions from active duty service members than all other primary candidates put together, including Barack Obama back then. So here's the latest chart. 2011 military donations. We've got Ron Paul, Mitt Romney, uh, Kane, and, and Bachman there. Nice to have a little visual effect to put that in perspective.